Okay, guys, so we're moving on to question three. Okay, so it says the Big Five Marathon is an annual event in South Africa. It can be run as a full 42 kilometer marathon or a half of 21 kilometers. The race has specific cutoff times, certain compulsory distances to be covered within specific times. Um, runners who do not meet the runoff times are forced, I mean the cutoff times, are forced to withdraw from the race. Okay. Then it says, below are the cutoff times for the full marathon. Okay. So the full marathon basically says you have to get to 25,5 kilometers in four hours and 15 minutes. Otherwise, you're going to be chucked out the race. And then basically, it does it for the different different um, distances as well. So it's saying you get a total of seven hours to do the marathon. Okay. So let's now see what it says. It says, use the information above and annex to C to answer the questions that follow. Okay, so annex to C, remember, you have these annexures, right? And we're going to use them. So don't um, uh, forget about that, right? So here's the map, right? They start over here. It's always good to have a highlighter. So they start over here. Okay, and basically they head the whole way around here and then they finish here. So it's kind of like a weird, I don't want to say a loop because it's like kind of all over the place. But they, they start and finish at the same place. Okay. So it says, determine as a decimal fraction, okay, it's important, they're telling us what form they want the answer in, the probability of a runner um, of the big five marathon in the route accessing a refreshment station that only that offers only Coke and water. Okay, so let's see what these refreshment stations offer. So we can see that all these little guys are refreshment stations. Okay, so all of these guys. So let's just highlight all of the refreshment stations. Okay, let's see if we got all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pretty much looks like all of them. So we want all the ones with just Coke and water. So we see over here, Coke is represented by a little Coke bottle and water by a little glass of water. So only those two, we see there's one, two, three, mm, four. Okay, so we know that four, right, out of the total nine, right, you can get Coke and water only. So that's going to be our probability, okay? Our probability, let's write this nicely over here, 3.1.1. So our probability of Coke and water only, right, is 4 over 9. Now, that is not our final answer because they asked us to put it in a decimal. So, sorry, I've got a very dirty screen here, okay? So you have to say 4 over 9 and put it into a decimal, and it is 0 0.444. So you can just say it's equivalent to 0 0.44. Okay, so just round it off. Okay, so that is that question done and dusted. Remember with probability, what we're saying is we're always saying, what are the events that meet our criteria, right? So there are four ways it could meet our criteria of Coke and water only. And then what are all the other ways, right, that we can then be at a refreshment station. So there's nine refreshment stations, but only four of them, right, meet our criteria. So it's important to always think about probability in that way. Okay. Let's now go to the next question. So it says, give the general direction in which a marathon runner is heading when passing the 20 kilometer mark. Okay, so let's go back to our annexure. Okay. So 20 kilometers is down here, right? So he's kind of heading in that direction. So if we know that north is up, we know that south is down, that's east, that's west, because remember, it's never eat silkworms. That's how I remember it. So you have north, east, north, east, and this is kind of pointing somewhere in between here. So I'm going to say southeast, okay? So that is the direction that the runner will be running in when he gets to the 20-kilometer mark. Okay, south, east. Okay. Just before we move on here, let's just double check that you understand what I'm saying here. Okay, remember, here's a 20 kilometer mark. They're basically saying it's over here. So he'll be running in that direction because he has to run there in order to get to 25. Okay, so don't get confused. I'm not making this up. It's all on the map, okay? This is also a great question if you do geography to actually practice a bit of like map interpretation. Okay, let's now go into the next question. It says, consider the heights above sea level for this race. Okay, let's just quickly see what, what, what that means. So you see here, it has all these different heights, right? And all these heights are actually above sea level. Oh, that's distance, sorry. These are all heights above sea level, okay? 
So then it says, explain why a runner was correct when he stated that he was running uphill from the start to the 10 kilometer mark. So let us figure that out. Okay, I'm going to use, I'm running out of, of highlights of colors here. Let's use purple. Okay. Cool. So he starts over here. Okay. And he's going to run, run, run. Oh, goodness. I'm not very good at tracing this line. Okay. And that's five kilometers. So that's five kilometers. And then he's going to run over here to 10 kilometers. Okay. So do you see when he starts, right? The height that he starts at, or she, doesn't have to be a, a man. Um, uh, he starts at 1,400, right? Meters above sea level. And by the time he gets to 10 kilometers, he is 1,708 meters above. At the five kilometers, he's 1,565 meters above, right? So he starts quite low and he's running uphill, okay? So yes, he is correct, right? And we can say here, yeah, you can literally say start, he starts at a height of 1,400 meters. At five kilometers, it's a height of 1,500 and uh, 1,565 and then at 10 kilometers it is 1,708 so you can say height increases over 10 kilometer over maybe say over first 10 kilometers okay so that's how we know right because it basically said explain why he said that is he correct and then we'll say Yes, he is correct, okay? Remember with these questions, and this is something um, students often forget, right? When they're asking you to explain whether he's correct or not, always state whether he is, right? Don't just give an explanation and leave it at that and assume that the marker just knows what you mean. Always give, always say, is he correct or is he not correct? Okay, cool. So that was A. Let's now move on to 3.1.3B. Okay. So it says express in the form one, two, something, um, the lowest height above sea level to the highest height above sea level on the map. Okay, it doesn't say on the map there, but obviously you can't know other, other um, metrics outside of the map. So let's see, they're wanting us to express it as a ratio. So let's find the lowest point on the map that we can possibly find height-wise. So I'm thinking the lowest point in the map, and I'm just going to use blue now because nice to have some color so that's the lowest point in the map that i'm seeing okay see if you can see anyone lower i don't see anyone lower and i see that this is pretty much the highest one over here okay so now we have the lowest to the highest so let's put that into a ratio so we're going to say lowest to highest we have 1166 to 1708 but they've asked us to express it as a ratio of one to something. So what do we have to do to that side to get to one? Well, we divide by one, six, six, right? What we do to the one side of the ratio, we always have to do to the other side of the ratio, right? That's how ratios work. Otherwise you change fundamentally the relationship that you're trying to um, display. So we go one, uh, sorry, one, seven, oh, eight, divided by one, six, six, okay? And this is 1.465. I'm just going to do two, three decimal places. Okay, so that's your answer there. 1 to 1.465. Okay, so that's that question done. Okay, let's now go to the next question. Okay, 3.1.4. It says, explain why there are cutoff times for a marathon. So this is one of those questions where they ask you to um, use your common sense or to explain the scenario, right? They don't want you to just see the maths in the scenario. They want you to see the practicalities. So why are there cutoff times? Well, it's for the safety of the runners, right? You could say safety, um, safety of participants. Um, you could say it's... Um, to it's so that i mean other events can be held afterwards because if you don't put a cut off time right someone could be running like forever ever ever so it gives a limit as to when the event actually is going to be held over right so if you don't give a limit then you're like okay it could be like a couple of days because like i could do a marathon in a couple of days if you like gave me lots of breaks right so for safety of the participants it's for event planning purposes um it could also just be to make sure that those who aren't coping actually they just they, they take a time out and maybe try again next time sort of thing. So there's lots of answers there. Again, you can go look at the memo and the link in the bio. Um, but this is just an idea. 
some ideas. Okay. Let's now move to 3.1.5. Okay. So it says, for the half marathon, a runner must cover a distance of 16.5 kilometers in a time of five hours from the start of the race to beat the cutoff to, um, cut off two time for the half marathon. Okay. A runner of the full marathon compared his speed with the speed of the half marathon runner and stated that he had to run 2,75 kilometers per hour faster in order to beat the cutoff time uh, of the full marathon. Okay. Verify showing all calculations whether this is correct. Okay. And they've given us this nice little formula. Now, what we must always remember is there's this little thing like this, right? There's this little... Oh, sorry. Triangle. I'm sure if you do geography, you know this. We actually use this in a lot of different subjects, right? It's a little triangle. So we know that distance, distance equals speed times time. Time equals distance over speed and speed equals distance over time. Okay, so you can use this triangle always. So what we want to know is we want to know the speed, right? So we actually want to know speed, which equals distance over time. And we want to know it for the full marathon and we want to know it for the half right so i'm just going to do these two calculations next to each other so that we can compare them let me make sure you can see great okay so for the full marathon the distance for the second cutoff time is 31.5 kilometers and the hours right is five hours and 15 minutes might have to do some converting there um this one for the half marathon they said was 16,5 kilometers over five hours okay 15 kilometers i mean 16.5 kilometers over five hours so this one's easy to put in a calculator so let's do the one on that side so we just say 16.5 divided by five. So he has to run, if someone's doing a full marathon, they have to run at least 3.3 kilometers per hour. Okay. So over here, we can't just put five hours and 15 minutes into our calculator. We need to make sure that we're putting this as like a decimal, like the 16.5 or the 31.5. So let's just do a little offshoot calculation here. So technically we're saying five hours, right? And 15 of the 60 minutes in the next hour right so this is the same as saying five so put 15 divided by 60 into your calculator and you'll see it's 0 0.25 so this five hours and 15 minutes can actually be written as 31.5 kilometers over 5.25 hours Okay, it's important to do this because we want to compare like with like. So if this is kilometers per hour, we want to make sure that our answer for the full marathon is also kilometers per hour because it makes it easier for us to compare those things. Okay, it also then shows you how you must be comfortable with manipulating time and moving from hours and minutes to a form of um, just hours. Okay, so let's now put 31.5 divided by 5.25 and we see that that is six kilometers per hour. So this full marathon runner has to run at six kilometers per hour to meet cutoff two. This half marathon runner has to run at 3.3 kilometers per hour to meet cutoff two. So the difference here is, if you put that into your calculator, right, six divided by, I mean, minus 3.3. So yes, right? This runner is correct in saying that if you're doing the full marathon, yes, you do have to run 2.7 kilometers per hour faster than someone who is doing the half marathon to meet the cutoff time. Okay, so we, we're comparing two cutoff times, we're comparing two speeds for two different runners running, the one's running full and one runs, one's running half, and we compare those two speeds. We say the difference is 2,7. Therefore, the person is right. It is 2,7 um, kilometers per hour faster. Okay. So it's quite a tricky question, but one of those ones that, again, break it down into its constituent parts, right? And then it's a little bit easier to access. Okay. Cool. Let's move on to the second part of question three.